Hi, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Claiborne. I'm so very, very grateful to have you with me here today. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a project, um, something that I have been wanting to get done for a very long time, which was to remove some of the siding from an old 80 year old building here on the property. And this is one of the worst pieces, so they didn't all look quite this bad, but I wanted to turn that siding, but honor the building and turn it into something useful. So I wanted to put skirting on the bottom of my vintage 1989 Vagabond camper. I had been wanting skirting on there for quite some time, and this is the way that I decided to do it. However, one of the challenges when you have a project in mind is trying to get that vision from your mind and projecting it onto other people and having them see it the way that you see it. it that's not always easy. That, that in itself can be quite the challenge. So for instance, the paint. Um, I wanted it to come out something like this old barn door. I wanted it to have a natural whitewash look. And so trying to convey that, I'm putting paint on old rusted tin and I want it to look like that. Um, trying to get that across to somebody who works behind um, in a professional uh, capacity, works behind a counter, and make them understand that is not always easy. That can be a challenge. And so um, I had a very small budget for this project, so I couldn't buy a lot of fancy primers and, and treat the tin and whatever. I, I just had to just buy some paint. And so I got a satin finished outdoor latex paint and I just threw some glitter in it. Um, and the glitter wasn't for glitter. It was mostly for reflective purposes for when the sun does shine on that skirting, it kind of reflects back out. I thought that that would be beautiful. And so we um, got the paint, that was fine. Um, another thing that was challenged for me was um, manipulating tin. I had never worked with metal on metal before. And so working with a sledgehammer uh, wasn't aware um, how long this project was going to take and how much of a workout it was going to be and so I had really sore arm muscles there for a while just from working with the sledgehammer. Also I've not worked with machine screws that much because like I said I haven't done a lot of metal on metal and so learning to remember to put the washer on and and then you have to reach around and hold the nut while you're on the other side trying to screw a screw you know, I tried to coax Momo out of the woods, but he was interested in helping me with this project. If you don't know who Momo is, I'll try to pin a link in the comments. Um, but I didn't have much help for that. So some of the pieces still aren't connected. I do have to wait for a human to come and help me do that. Also crawling around underneath a camper that's sitting down on the dirt. Um, that was interesting because at one point I was reaching under a panel and I swear a clawed wolf spider was on the other side and I went running for the hills. Turned out it was my cat. So um, it was just kind of a scary feeling, you know, working under a creepy old, old camper that has been sitting there for a long time. That was kind of creepy. Um, and then the other challenge I would have to say is the weather. So when my daughter and I first did finally get the panels, the fabricated panels, painted um that day it poured rain and washed almost every bit of the paint back off it didn't look like this anymore it just looked like it was back to this again so i had to go out and you know suck it up buttercup and paint them a second time and then about two days after that um we got a storm and so i get up and i precariously look outside and of course it's not sitting, my camper doesn't sit on a nice cement slab, it sits on the soil. And so with a storm and this light colored background, yeah, I got a lot of splash back. And so all my beautiful panels were covered in mud. So I had to go around and wash them. That made me want to go throw rocks in the pond, believe me. So there has been challenges, but I would have to say that um, when you're going to tackle a project like this, get a vision in your head and then Remember, 5% of it is probably desperation. You, you have a need to get this thing done. So that's half the battle right there, is I need to get this done. So keep that need in your mind. 3% um, of it at least is gonna be inspiration. Um, for this particular project, I looked high and low for inspiration. And honestly, I will pin another link in the comments. Um, the folks at Slab City, they are a remarkable group of people that are kind of like nomads and they can collect things and turn um, everyday objects into beautiful works of art. And it's just, uh, they just manipulate it and they just do it. 
And so um, I found them very inspirational, some of uh, the folks who live out there in the Sonoma Desert, very inspirational for this particular project. And then the last 2% I would have to say is Nike, uh, just do it. So you just jump in there and you just do it and you learn as you go. So um, I'm happy to share this project with you. I hope you enjoy this video. Well, the beginning of this project uh, to skirt the camper is to start taking the um, tin off and we also have to empty the moon shack. So we've had stuff stored up in there for three years and I figured if we hadn't used it or missed it in three years, we probably didn't need it. Um, but there's been a few fun surprises like this croquet set. I forgot we even had it. So this is going to be great. It's going to give us another game to play down here. Well, we figured out that these sheets are five foot long and we need 60 feet total. So now we know how many sheets we need. We also know how many screws, washers, and nuts we need. And then look at that one. Now I will literally have a shotgun house. That's so cool. I just got back from Lowe's, which is a 120 some odd mile trip for us. And See, I already had that. So I guess this is my Christmas haul. <laughs> this is half my Christmas is getting skirting for Goldie. So I got my paint pan and my liner and my handle and my roller brushes. I could just get the economy. Um, she gave me three sticks and told me good luck. <laughs> that lady. Whoa, I'm probably blinding y'all. I found gold flag. Yay. My color, I think it's pretty good. Let's go check this out. I think we did pretty good. I just, she couldn't do it from my phone. So yeah, it's lighter and brighter. Don't you love that name? Ew. <laughs> but I think this is gonna work. And then I got my hardware. So Tom, you who works at Lowe's, you are amazing. He found everything I needed like right away. So I'll be giving Tom a good review tonight. So now all I have to do, all I have to do is go down all of my 60 feet, all of my panels, straighten them out, uh, sweep them off and paint them. And uh, I'm, oh, my paint that I got is a semi, semi uh, season flex uh, by Valspar. So it's, I don't know, it's under 50 bucks. Um, it's exterior paint plus primer. So, um, she said, yeah, if this is ever going to hold up for any amount of time, blah, blah, blah. You'd have to put primer on first. I said, that is not what I'm going for. I'm going for a shabby chic look. So if it does start to peel off, um, it's not going to upset me all that much. She said, okie dokie. So she hooked me up. So, um, dang, I don't remember her name, but anyway, she was, she was very helpful too. All right. I'm going to straighten all my panels out and sweep them off. So the way I'm getting my straight edge is I'm not fooling with cutting it because that would take way too much energy for me. So I'm just using a straight edge. I'm giving it a good fold and then I'm banging it back with a sledgehammer. If you've never taken a sledgehammer to 10, <laughs> I strongly, highly suggest it. It's very therapeutic and it just kind of cool. Make stuff out of Tin, especially old tin. I like your technique. That's a good shabby shabby there. Do I have a technique? You do have a technique. You have a shabby shabby. So once I get my panels constructed, in other words, I have the foam 
um, secured to the back of each panel and I know where each panel is going to set and I kind of set them up where they're going to be uh, temporarily. I can now go through and paint the individual squares with random colors. So I'm starting off with a light blue and I think after this I'm going to go with a very light purple since all I have to do is add a tiny bit of red to this blue and I'm going to go all the way around uh, to every panel and just very randomly paint a square, uh, a brick if you will, and then I'll stand back and look at it and see if it's uh, not enough and then I'll add more. And the last 90% of motivation behind a really large project like this is knowing that at some point you can step back and say, I finished it. I took this vision from my mind and brought it out into the world and now it is a reality. I'm very happy with the way that my skirting came out. I love the colors that I chose. It is in the shade most of the time and the little spots that do get sun are being very reflective with that glitter in there. The yellow checks that you see, I actually hand blowed glitter onto those. I landscaped the front of it with Royal Standard Hostas so you know how large those are gonna get. They're gonna get really, really big. And the little trinkets that you see are items that were already here on the property when we bought it and I just brought them down from the moon shack to further honor the moon shack. Now my panels are not in place yet but they're all done and ready to go. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me through this project and remember if you can envision it you believe in yourself you can make anything you can do anything you put your mind to. Thanks for being with me much love and light blessed be.